You are welcome on board the Teacher Hub 247. This is a unique platform where the heart and science of literature are discussed. This particular video is about an African play titled Once Upon an Elephant. Earlier on this channel, we discussed the plot summary of this text as well as Acts 1 to 4 of the text. So, I would advise that you watch those videos before you watch this one. So, you can just make a request that I should send you the links to those videos. And I will rightly do that. Just write in the message box that I will send you the link to those videos and I will do that. Now, let's go ahead. Act 5. This scene takes place in the palace. Ajanaku is in council with the elders, settling a land dispute. He remember that Ajanaku has been crowned as the king in the previous act. Now he's now in council with his people, settling the dispute, the land dispute. Ajanaku tells the people that he remembers that his father addressed the same land dispute while on the throne. He says a decision was taken then and asked why they still go back to the same issue. Rubaon responds that the matter was complex and his father didn't want to hurt either of the family hands, he couldn't tackle it. But Jimmy asks that King Akijobi suggested that the two families should work together mutually, considering the tricky nature of the subject. In response to a question from King Ajanaku, either side proved and claims the ownership of the land. The man also responds to another question from King Ajanaku and says he has cocoa, vegetables, and palm kernel on the farm. Ajanaku is surprised by the farm produce on the farm. Ogurile then tells the king that the land is big and fertile. Other Jimmy, with the permission of the king, asks the two women about their trade. Umawan says she sells okra in the market. Umatu says she sells yam tuba in the market. She also says she's the only daughter while the remaining four are men. It is then concluded that the people are lazy. That is why the old man works on the land only with this little boy. Ajanaku also adds that the people only have interest in the farm produce and not the work to be done on the farm. Ajanaku, while giving his judgment, says that one is selfish while the other is lazy. He says the two are of the same kind and that the king cannot even boast of such robust affairs. So here we can see that uh, Ajanaku is interested in, land, in the land. He then concludes that the palace will manage the land for now and further decisions on the farm will be communicated to them in due course. He comes for the next case where the people concerned on the farm issue move out dejectedly. But Jimmy calls the attention of the king to consider the work done on the farm by the man in the judgment. Ajanaku then replies that the women that truly own the land as custom demand should also be considered. But Jimmy says they should have claimed it when the land was pushy and not when a first approaches. Gondele also urges the man that is selfish for planting cocoa. He also argues that the man is selfish for planting cocoa, vegetable and pancanes at the same time. That is uh, the comment from Gondele about the man. He's saying that the man is, uh, is selfish for planting all those things at the same time. At this juncture, Iagba enters with a prophobia saying extolling the name of the king that benefits the people. Ajanaku asks for her mention in the palace, and Ogundele also says she shouldn't be in the palace. Iagba continues in assessment by saying that there are consequences for any shoddy deeds. Ajanaku orders that she be bundled out of the palace. Iagba starts singing about a leper who said two things and one is a lie. The leper said he struck his child with his palms and pinched him severely with his fing fingernails. You know what he's saying is that uh, one is 
true while the other is false. The one that is true that it is when the labor says that he struck his child with his palms, that one is possible. But to pinch him severely, that one is not possible. She starts another song about an elephant who is tricked with the promise to be made a king. The song in Yoruba, In fact, this song is from a trickster tale in Yoruba. It's about uh, an elephant and a tortoise. You know, in Yoruba land, tortoise is a trickster animal. So that is where the uh, the song is uh, is from. That's the, 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 the song is from that uh, trickster tale. Ajanu gets up in annoyance and says, the Yagba should not come to the palace again and goes out. But then Bami and Ogundeli say, they don't know what she wants in the palace. But then Jimmy then reminds them that she used to live in the palace before. Ogundeli responds, responds that she lost that privilege a long time ago. But then Bami also adds that her insanity is not as serious as not knowing where to go. They are all talking as they live. That's the end of Act 5. And while we continue, if you are new on this channel, please try and click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever any video is produced. Now, Act 6 of Once Upon an Elephant. This act takes place in the palace. The Yagba sits with her back to the inner chambers. Ajanaku and his wife Omoyene comes out and Omoyene shows Ajanaku Iyagba. Ajanaku asks Iyagba a mission in his palace. The latter picks on that statement and says that the statement indicates that Ajanaku is not worthy of the position he is in. Ajanaku boasts that the old woman should call him Ajanaku, his rightful name, instead of Olani Yonu. Because the woman was calling him Olani Yonu when she enters the palace. This shows Ajanaku as a dictator. Yagba responds that lizard and crocodile may look alike, but not the same. That is prophebia. Ajanaku, Ajanaku refers to Yagba again as being mad for that prophebia statement. He says she has lost her memory, all sense of time, and roams the streets. In mental darkness. Iyagba reminds him of his past in which he's trying to run away from. She also tells him that he will return all he took away from him in due course. But this is a foreshadowing as we shall see later in the text. Ajanku also refers to the wrong accusation of Iyagba as being atrocious, adulterous as we shall see later in the play. Let me take that one again. Ajanaku also refers to the wrong accusation of Yagba as being adulterous, as we shall read later in the play. You know, she was alleged to be adulterous. That's why she was sent out of the palace. We are going to read about it later. He says the old woman desecrated this palace. Yagba counters that the palace belonged to her late husband, Akinjobi. Ajanaku responds that Akinjobi's palace died with him. The old woman takes him up for not giving honor to the late king, even in his death. She says, Ajanaku lied and deceived the late king. He had a statement that, quote, You only kill a man, not his good deeds. Unquote. That's the quotation from Yagba that you only kill a man, not his good deeds. This indicates that Ajanaku has a hand in the death of Akinjobi. She also blames those that support him to be enthroned as the king and says they have lost their heads. Ajanaku threatens to throw her out of the palace. She sends Omayani to call the guards for him. Iyagba dances and sings about the elephant again. She then accuses him of being a flirt when she asks, quote, Is kissing a dead body not better than killing it? Unquote. She alleges that the king runs after everything in Rapa shamelessly. Omoyeni has now returned with some guards. Yagba then bounces on Omoyeni. Omoyeni is Ajaza's daughter and her mother is Adoni. She's supposed to be the wife of Dilani, who has worked for Omoyeni's father's method 
for months in order to marry Omayene. That is, the boy has been working in his uh, father's uh, smithy uh, in order to marry uh, the daughter, that is, in order to marry Omayene. Omaya is now pregnant in Ajanaku's house. The fairy Yagba asks Omayene questions about her parents and the pregnancy. She reminds her of the efforts made by Delani in her father's furnace to marry her. She then asks her who the owner of the child in her stomach is. Ajanaku wants to interrupt, but the old woman stops him to allow Omoyeni to respond to her questions. She refers to Ajanaku as a bastard, raising another bastard through another mad woman. She says, the owner of a bad habit will not leave it behind, but travel along with it. She sings, she sing that song again. King Olani Yonu boasts again that he is Ajanaku, who has been the greatest from childhood. Iyagba accepts that he is Ajanaku, very big and mighty, but with vain glory and empty brain. Ajanaku keeps on saying that Iyagba is insane and incurable in his response. Iyagba agrees and says that that is how he deceived her husband many years back. She says his hand is near. This is another foreshadowing. King Ajanaku says Akinjobi, his father, and Iyagba's husband should have killed her then because of her unfaithfulness. That is, Ajanaku is saying that uh, Akinjobi should have killed Iyagba then as, as a result of her of faithfulness to him. Iyagba then revealed that Akinjobi is not the biological father of King Ajanaku. She tells him to stop the lie. It is Serubawan that gave birth to Ajanaku. She also accuses Serubawan of turning the tradition of the land upside down. Serubawan comes in at this juncture. Greets Ajanaku. Iyagba then turns to Serubawan to Serubawan to tell Ajanaku who his real father is. That is, Yagba turns to Ajanaku when he comes in that he should tell Ajanaku who his father is. That is, the real father. Serubawan says the guard should send her out of the palace. Yagba responds that Serubawan should tell King Ajanaku the truth that he does not belong to the household he is in. The woman pronounced Ajanaku a bastard point blank as Serubawan keeps on telling the guards to send her out. He asked the guards why she was allowed to enter the palace. The guards could not give any satisfactory answer. Ajanaku tried to seek clarification from Serubawan on the utterances of Yaba, especially a reference to him as a bastard. At this stage, Ajanaku begins to discover that something is wrong with his birth. In literature, we call that anagnosis. Anagnosis. That is the moment in the plot of a drama in which the hero makes a discovery that explains previously unexplained events or situation about him. That is, when a hero just discovers something, that is, he's suspecting something about him that has not been discovered before. That is an agnosis. So at this stage, Ajanaku is suspecting something about his life. Ajanaku is greatly annoyed for calling him names and a bastard. So Rubawa then appeals to him not to take Yagba's word seriously, as everybody knows she is insane. He says that is why the late king puts her in the appropriate place she belongs. He then orders Rubawa to find a solution to Iyaba as he doesn't want to see her in the palace again. So that's the end of the this act also. So if you are new on this channel try and subscribe to the channel by click on the subscribe button and the bell icon. And if you have any question on this video or any other video or on literature general generally be it on poems, the text just send your questions through the message box. We discuss WAC syllabus here, WAC and NECO syllabus. 
So if you have any question on any of the text or poems, just send it through the message box. So you remember the uh, the syllabus is a harmonized syllabus by Wyeck and Nego. So you can also share any of our video on the any of the videos can be shared on this, so any social media platform. Invite your friends to join us. Thank you and God bless.